So uh, Greg's uh, bride um, is Jewish and has come to know Yeshua as Messiah. And so we have the rare privilege of having uh, their shepherd leader, Rabbi, Rabbi Charlie, come. And he's going to kind of lead us in this last portion. So Rabbi Charlie. So tempting to just kind of sit down on the. It's like a spa, you know? I'm going to share just a couple of words, but I have to admit, this is the first time ever I've spoken to a congregation while sitting in a tub. It's pretty amazing. Do you want me to come in? Yeah, you can come down. So this is Liat Dewar. Liat and Greg are dual citizens. Uh, isn't that wonderful? So citizens in Trinity Church and citizens in Semach Adonai, a Messianic congregation. And what a wonderful thing. And in a way, we're kind of fusing two traditions here today. So it's great, we're Jews, we're Gentiles, one God, one King, and here we are. Amen? Amen? So... Uh, I'm not going to share along, just a minute or two, but just to kind of introduce or bring in a little bit uh, of the background of the baptism. First of all, in Jewish practice, uh, we usually refer to the Tevilah, which means immersion, and it is from the Tevilah or the immersion in Jewish practice that baptism originates, that it comes from. And in the immersion, it... Here, I'm going to share the familiar part. Everyone knows. It's for purification. And uh, even to this very day, purification from uncleanliness of some kind. You can read this in various portions of the Torah, especially the book of Leviticus, which focuses on that. But there are many sources or causes or reasons varying from uh, diseases such as leprosy uh, down to, oops, I ate the wrong food today or even what we call family purity. So all of those kinds of things. In the ancient times, a worshiper, when they ascended to the Temple Mount, uh, which were commanded to do at least three times a year, they would immerse. So that on reaching that sacred precinct, they were prepared fully, inwardly and outwardly. And even, I was sharing with Liat this morning, there was an ancient practice in which the Levites assigned someone to be at every mikvah, that's the, what you call the baptismal, to observe. And then when the worshiper came out, they handed them a little chip. This is really true. Archaeologists, archaeologists have proven, proven this. And on the little chip it says, Kodesh la Adonai, holy for the Lord. And then you went up to the sacred precinct and you handed the temple guard the little chip and they knew that you'd been purified. It's an outward sign. And so what we do today is, is an outward sign of what is essentially an inward work of the Lord. Okay, all of that I think is probably familiar to you folks. Now what's slightly less familiar, you may not know, is that up and to this day, in uh, traditional Jewish practice, there is another reason for immersion, and that is when the worshiper receives from God a great insight or revelation. Okay? We're told that we're commanded to go uh, into the mikvah in order, why? In order to be vessels appro appropriately ready and prepared to apply, to receive and then apply this revelation. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So... You might say, well, where does it say that? Virtually every baptism in the book of Acts follows that pattern. Now, in, when we're looking at the Gospels, what do we see? We see some of the more traditional understandings of the immersion. John the Baptist at the River Jordan, he cried, cried out, Come and be immersed. Repent of your sins. And we, th we often associate and think of this as an outward showing of our inward work of repentance and transformation in our hearts, just as Pastor Joel was talking about 
this morning, that most important part is the transformation of, of the heart, not what we show outwardly, but it's an outward showing of that. And so uh, John would call out to the crowds anyone who would come, and I think this is also his why he showed reticence at immersing the Messiah himself. He said, I'm not worthy to do this, and certainly you don't need it. Well, of course he didn't. He had no cause for repentance. However, he did it, he said, for the sake of righteousness. But in the book of Acts, lo and behold, the Ethiopian, who, had, who was just coming from the temple and having worshipped there and was confused about a little passage of scripture and met Philip and said, could you explain this to me? Seems like you're a knowledgeable Jew here. What does this mean, this passage? And, and, he read, and he explained to him how it pointed to the Messiah. And then he told him who the Messiah was. And then the Ethiopian said, oh, where's the water? Because when you receive a, a great revelation such as that, a life-changing, this is the Messiah, you want the water. And then another example, when Peter was sent by God himself to Cornelius the centurion and to explain to him about the Messiah afterwards Peter looked around the room and he said where's the water can we prevent this one from being immersed in the water of course not let's let's do it and because he himself was a recipient of a great revelation and this is for me this is what I'm really celebrating here is that the is the recipient of a great revelation and how appropriate, and fulfilling our long-standing tradition, Amen. all the way back to the Bible times. This is why we're doing it. I personally see room for each, actually all of these ideas uh, represented here in the immersion. We have that repentance, change of heart part that John the Baptist called for. We have the public decoration of our faith part. See here, I do this because of what I declare. This is now showing that God has done that inward work. And we have the great revelation from God part. All of those. And finally, I didn't mention this, but especially in Christian tradition, it echoes, the, in a sense, the, the death and the resurrection of the Lord. We go down and rise up. So all of that is there. And basically, as well, it is a mitzvah to perform, okay? It is a mitzvah. We're actually fulfilling the commandment of the Lord. And so, in our tradition, when God permits us to come to such an auspicious moment, and we have a prayer, it's called the Shehekiyana. If you know it, you can, you can say it with me, but we're going to say Shehekiyana. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehekianu Vekiyamanu Vehigianu Lazman Hazeh Which means, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us alive. That's the Kiyamanu part. Sustained us and enabled... That's the... No, it's not. Sustained us and enabled us to reach this season. Literally what that means. And uh, before I immerse Liat, I'm going to say a little prayer. All right? Lord, I thank you for Liat and her faith. And it's such a wonderful thing to see it declared. And not just like hidden within, but declared here before all of your people... And I pray that this would be really like a seed planted that will, will grow and produce fruit many, many times over. I thank you for Liad and Greg, and bless them in Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay. And then secondly, um, I would like to ask, is there anything you'd like to share with us? Well, there's a lot. Okay. <laughs> But I don't have the time, and I, I want to thank you guys for coming. And, you know, um, when I was looking at the circle that Joel put up, there's one circle that's missing, is mine. 
um, right by a cross, setting it up on fire with bombs, <laughs> or digging, digging like a really big hole to bury the cross down, and it kept popping out again, something. Um, yeah, you see the one, right? <laughs> explosion. I wanted to share, uh, I want to thank my family, my husband, <laughs> that prayed for me for 25 years and more, you know. <laughs> and I, I hated the name, I pushed it away, I fought against it, I didn't understand, I cursed it, and it's still, God is so patient and loving, even with a stubborn woman like me, uh, you know, and I, you know, my children that suffered, because of me, and uh, I, um, and my Christian friends <laughs> they couldn't hear Deborah. Said, oh, there's a great thing you have to hear. Is Jewish? <laughs> oh, he's not. So uh, in the Messianic synagogue and Clara that introduced me to the Messianic synagogue 15 years ago, and I thought they're a bunch of loonies. Uh, and I'm so grateful that when God came to me in dreams, which is not like me. I'm not a dream kind of person. I'm a very practical Israeli, no kakamimi nonsense. Uh, and God came to me and I knew that I have to go to the Messianic Synagogue because I'm no longer, um, I am a Messianic Jew and, uh, and I'm thankful for one for Israel <laughs> because uh, when Yeshua came into my life through dreams, I couldn't even share it with anybody, so I typed in Hebrew, uh, I googled in Hebrew, why Yeshua, and the ministry, a Jewish-Israeli ministry, one for Israel, came and explained to me about the blood uh, sacrifice and everything, and it was all clear to me, it was, you know, the Holy Spirit. I was ready to be baptized the day after, <laughs> uh, but it's been 10 months now, and I'm so grateful, I'm so honored, and I'm... I love God, I love Yeshua, and I love all of you. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Uh, so, I'm supposed to interrogate you. <laughs> so, is this indeed an acknowledgement of your faith in the Lord and his Messiah and your determination to serve him all your days. I do. Okay. We wanted to hear that. And uh, as many of you probably know, there's a proper blessing for everything. <laughs> so we're going to say one. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kidshanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu al tevilah. Amen. Which means, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commands us to immerse. So, good thing I waterproofed it. <laughs> uh, so, in the name of the Father, the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit, Ha'al, Ha'ben, Vet, Ha'ruach HaKodesh, I immerse you.